Why does Stephen go all the way back to Abraham to answer the charge against him of blasphemy? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Acts on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Acts 7 verses 1 to 8. Before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Acts chapter 7 verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen. The glory of God appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran, and said to him, Get out of your country and from your relatives, and come to a land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which you now dwell. And God gave him no inheritance in it, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. But God spoke in this way, that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them four hundred years. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge, said God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. At the end of the last chapter, we had Stephen being brought before the council to answer charges that he had committed blasphemy by speaking against the temple, saying that Jesus was going to destroy it, and against Moses, saying that Jesus was going to change the customs that Moses delivered to them. These were false charges, and of course, as we explained in the last lesson, but here in verse 1, the high priest is asking Stephen to answer the charges by asking if what the witnesses are speaking against him are true. Stephen begins his speech, which hereafter we will refer to as a sermon, by going back all the way to Abraham, a man who lived about 2,000 years before. To put it in perspective, Stephen was as far away from Abraham historically as we are today at the time of recording from Stephen. Why would Stephen go back this far to answer a present-day charge? Remember the charge. Jesus would destroy the temple and change the customs of Moses. Stephen goes back to the beginning of the Jewish people to show that God's plan was to never live in a temple in Jerusalem, nor was the law of Moses to be a permanent law. It was pointing to a new covenant through Jesus that would be made with all people. Jesus wasn't going to destroy God's house because God doesn't live in temples made with hands, for he was with Abraham long before the temple in Jerusalem ever existed. And Jesus didn't come to destroy the law of Moses, but to fulfill it and usher in the new covenant, which brings with it the forgiveness of sins and peace with God. But he has to point the Jews back to Abraham in order to lay the foundation of this argument. So he refers back to the scriptures that these people would all know in order to do that. He begins by telling them that the glory of God didn't appear to him from some temple in Jerusalem, but to Abraham while he lived in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. To refresh our memories, let's go back and reread Genesis 11, verse 31, through chapter 12, verse 4. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, with, with his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram, and Abram was 75 years old, when he departed from Haran. 
Now, comparing Genesis 11 and 12 to Acts 7, we might think that there is a contradiction, for Genesis makes it appear that Abraham receives God's call while living in Haran, while Acts 7 clearly says that Abraham received God's call before living in Haran. But let's consider, did either passage say that God only spoke to Abraham once? No, in fact, God could have easily spoken to Abraham twice. Why would God need to do this? Because Terah, Terah died in Haran, so Abraham could have been tempted to either remain in Haran or return to Ur, hence the second call. But there's also another explanation, and that is the way that Hebrews write literature. It's not always chronological. Genesis 11 ends with Abraham leaving Ur with his entire family, including his father. His father was very old, so perhaps his father got sick, causing him to settle in Haran for a while, where Terah died. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 would thus act as a parenthetical thought, telling us why Abraham left Ur to begin with, while Genesis 12 verse 4 simply picks up the story after the death of Terah. Both possibilities fit the narrative and the style of writing at the time, so this is not a contradiction. Once Terah died, though, Abraham came to Canaan into a land that the Jews currently lived in. But God didn't give Abraham an inheritance in the land. He promised that Abraham's children would possess the land, a promise made when Abraham had no children. But before they possessed that land, they would dwell in a foreign land and be slaves there for 400 years, a story that is told at the end of Genesis and the beginning of Exodus. But God would judge that oppressive nation, and Israel would come out and worship him in this place, a reference to Mount Sinai. Again, Abraham spoke to God without the temple in Jerusalem, and Israel worshipped God before the temple as well at Mount Sinai. The covenant of circumcision was not made with Moses under that law. It was made with Abraham before the law of Moses, a key point for Stephen to make in answering the charges against him. This covenant is why Abraham circumcised his later-born son Isaac on the eighth day. But Isaac was only one son, not enough for a great nation. Isaac would begat Jacob, and Jacob would begat the twelve patriarchs. It would be from these people that the nation of Israel sprang from. All of this happened before the temple and before the law of Moses, showing us that God's promises did not depend on those two things, for they preceded them. We'll see how Stephen continues to build his case, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Acts chapter 7, verses 9 to 16, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends, so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Oh.